So those eight essential elements, let's talk about those. It's actually an acronym for teamwork. And it starts with T, which is total commitment. There's no plan B, you know, it detracts from plan A. Everybody has to be on this bus and the bus is going all the way to the finish line with no stops. If everybody on your team has that true commitment and inspires that in one another, that's where the magic happens. So for us, total commitment was a matter of what we call the four Ps, an incredible plan, you know, a vision of what's possible that's consistently communicated to the rest of the team. The second P was sense of purpose. What is your why? You know, something greater than yourself that you latch onto when the going gets tough. Your perseverance is the third P, the fact that you always do that extra thing that matters. You always go the extra mile and you never let your feelings affect what you do. You know, you don't let emotion affect locomotion because feelings are overrated. You know, you show your commitment to your team with what you consistently do day in and day out and your preparation because the luckiest people on earth are always the most well prepared, right? So if you have truly world-class preparation, you put that together with opportunity, you become the luckiest person in the world. The next essential element, the E, is all about empathy and awareness of teammates, that human connection. Because at the end of the day, we don't work for companies, we work for people. So you have to be the kind of person that people wanna work with and work for and demonstrate that every day. The A is adversity management, uh, challenge management, change management. Because if there's one thing that we all know in life, it's that change is the only thing that's ever gonna stay the same for us. You know, it's how we really respond day in and day out to those changes that dictates our success in the long run. So how do we see challenge and change, not as a negative, but as a springboard, maybe to something even better? Um, well, a lot of it is your attitude and seeing challenges versus roadblocks and being consistently focused on not the fear of failure, but the hope of success. You know, what's it really gonna take to win? in the long run, despite all these challenges and changes and keeping your teammates focused on that. Also never letting the pursuit of perfection hinder progress and embracing challenges as a chance to maybe learn something or excel in a different way, you know, as a springboard to something better in the future. The M is mutual respect. How do we inspire that respect from one another? Uh, and that a lot of that is a matter of consistently letting your teammates know that you have their back that there's nothing negative going on behind their backs, that who you are is your authentic self, and that you're consistently believing in your teammates beyond reason. Because what happens when we believe in people? They rise to the occasion, right? And when we don't believe in them, they also prove us right. And giving respect to teammates as a gift, not as a grade. When you give that respect 100%, where people understand that you're walking side by side with them, with that confidence, in one of this good faith and trust and affection. That's where the magic happens. The W is we thinking versus me thinking. A we thinker sees a world full of teammates everywhere they look. Their whole world is their team. Every interaction with another human being, they're constantly creating a win-win. Because again, the best of the best never have a goal they can accomplish alone. The best of the best realize that their way to the finish line is building an amazing team around them that they can consistently count on. People that are mentors, coaches, people that have strengths and talents that they don't have, people to whom they can outsource the stuff they're not great at. Um, the further you get in your career, you realize that your success doesn't come from reaching up, it comes from reaching out and being that kind of we thinker. And in that section, I actually talk about how being a we thinker doesn't mean that you necessarily have team goals. You can be a we thinker and have completely individual goals, but if you build a team, even to get your own individual goal, that's where the greatness happens. And I actually show a, a shot in my presentation of four people looking at maps, leaning over mountain bikes, looking at maps. And it looks like one team uh, figuring out strategy about where to go next in the race. But what I tell them is that this is actually my top two navigators and the top two navigator from our biggest competitors in this race the South Africans, looking at the maps with us at the front of the pack, vying for first place. Now, why in the world would you do that? Because it makes sense <laughs> to get a gap on the rest of the field. You get together with the other best and brightest in your field, in your industry, your colleagues, and you go exponentially faster for having worked together, even when your goals are completely individual or those people are not necessarily uh, a formal part of your team. The O is ownership of the project. How do you get that buy-in from everybody on your team? You either bring people onto your team who are truly inspired by the mission, you know, something deeper in their soul, or you inspire the people that are already on your team. And a lot of that is finding out what they're great at and letting them lead with that strength. Or 
finding out why they're working with you or working for you and helping them get whatever it is they desire out of working for you because they're gonna have a heck of a lot more buy-in. And asking for people's input because you know that people embrace the things that they help create. And here in the presentation, I show probably my favorite clip uh, about a guy named Dawat Mutang. And he's a farmer from the middle of the jungle in Borneo. <laughs> but he became an adventure racer by accident at the start of this race. There was a world-class team that had taken second place the year before. They were coming back to win. And on their way walking to the start line, one of their teammates broke his ankle. So they literally found a guy in the jungle. They started knocking on the huts in the jungle. I was watching all this happen. One guy opens the door and they quickly assess, you know, this guy will fit the Liker outfit that we suddenly have available. And a guy from the middle of the jungle in Borneo jumps in to the race. And not only do they finish, uh, this guy had never done any of these sports before. They took second place out of 63 teams. And there are so many um, great things to draw from that in terms of not only great leadership and teamwork, but he was so passionate about the mission and they further inspired him by letting him lead with his strength which was knowing exactly where he was going but you know more great statements that um, you know sometimes it makes you valuable to your teammates isn't necessarily what you know but it's based on what you're willing to learn and that what makes us all successful in the long run isn't just believing in ourselves you know what creates successful people is the fact that they get to the start line they have the courage and the willingness to get to the start line day in and day out and get in the game with the best of the best and find out what they're capable of and discover what they're not capable of and learn more and go back the next day. Exactly like this guy from the jungle, Dawat Mutang did. The R is relinquishment of ego. And this is a real toughie for a lot of people, right? I mean, the first thing that we say when someone says, can I help you, is what? No, of course not, I got this. But I want people to think of accepting help from their teammates, not as a weakness, but as a gift to the helper, because it is, isn't it? If you're able to help somebody, how great does it make you feel? So don't take that gift away from someone that wants to help you. It also creates a bond and a bridge. We always say that you have to leave your ego at the start line because your ego is the heaviest thing in your pack. You can't take it on the race course with you. And the K is kinetic leadership, meaning leadership that constantly flows and changes from a couple of different perspectives, changing leaders as well as changing leadership styles. And here we talk about the difference between management and leadership. And the fact that on any team, one of your most important jobs if you're a manager is to create other leaders. And how do we do that? Well, understanding that your job as a manager is to facilitate all of your teammates' success. You don't always have to be the leader, right? One of the most important things you can do for your team is create other leaders. Let others lead based on their strengths, not on their titles. And then in this section, we also talk about kinetic leadership, meaning uh, situational leadership. And we take a look at a Harvard Business Review study where they took a look at 3,000 middle-level managers over three years. Those leadership behaviors, their effect on the corporate climate, their effect on their team, and further, their effect on business unit profitability. And what they discovered, it was really amazing to me, that your leadership style or styles that you live in the most often, that's responsible for 30% of your business unit success. So you really gotta be that situational leader who is the right leader for the moment, the leader that your team needs on that day and in that moment, and be willing and aware enough to consistently shift those leadership styles.